And hello, I am uh, back doing another Jeremy Builds. I'm working more on the DOS gaming console, which you see here. And uh, there have been a number of changes to the lineup and the number of parts, uh, which I'm going to be showing here, you here in a second, just to kind of give you an update on how things have changed since then. Um, for starters, uh, you saw in the previous video where I had this uh, drive cage right here, which I plan on mounting an optical drive in this right here, and a, a three and a half inch floppy drive up in here. The change that I had to make to this was uh, originally, in the back of it right here, which this is gonna look uh, grody as hell now, but um, as you can see, I cut off a piece. Let's see if I can actually line that up and get it in the camera shot. Anyway, this piece connected right here. There you can sort of see it. There you can sort of see how it's going there. And um, because of that little tab right there and the uh, the bumps on the left and the right hand sides right there, they actually prevented the optical drive, which I would slide in to the front, from sliding all the way back. And I'll actually demonstrate this to you. How this is all going to work. The optical drive, which I have here, this is a SATA slot loading drive, which you have seen in the previous video, would uh, just slide right into the front of this, right like this, and it would slide all the way back, and then the, uh, the ass end of it would protrude out the back. So line up perfectly flush with the front, that is how much it sticks out. Now with this back piece in place, See if I can somewhat line this up again. This is actually somewhat challenging. Um, with this back piece in place, you can see that the little lip right there in the middle. Christ, I'm having to do this backwards. <laughs> and this is very awkward. Okay, there, uh, that little lip uh, that's uh, sort of towards the bottom right there is actually flush up against the back of the optical drive. Now there's a problem with that, and that is. Um, the uh, SATA connection on the back here, I actually don't have a power connection that's small enough to fit that, so I have to adapt that, which I also showed in the previous video, using this adapter right here. This adapter plugs in on the bottom here and on the opposite side. It gives us a uh, standard Molex connector right there, which is typically used for a 3.5-inch floppy drive, and then a standard SATA connection right there. So uh, the whole adapter pops on there, like so. <clears throat> I said the whole adapter pod. There we go. <laughs> so, um, with that adapter on there, it now gives us the uh, connection. This is really awkward. I'm going to do this backwards because I'm watching the viewfinder off to the side here. Um, it now has the connections we need to actually put this into a desktop computer. Now, the problem with this whole bracket assembly here before, and the reason why I had to modify it, is with the bracket in place right there, you go to push the optical drive through here, and if this piece wasn't in the way, am I actually doing that right? Yay for preparation, huh? Anyway, yeah, that's sort of, that's sort of like, <laughs> that's sort of like how it worked. I really should have done it before. Anyway, um, it starts to push through with the adapter, and then the adapter would actually get caught by that little lip right there. And um, as you can see on the front, not exactly flush. There's the front of the drive, and that's where we want it to be, flush up against that. And that is exactly the thickness of the adapter that we've put on the back of there, which is to be expected. So I had to cut that little chunk off the bottom there. Ow, 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 ow. Let's pinch my finger. Had to, yeah, okay. Had to snip that off, okay. And now the entire thing slides all the way in and all the way flush up against the front. And now we have the connections on the inside that we need. So um, that was the uh, first problem to overcome. And I actually, to modify that, it was just a, a simple uh, grinder kind of thing that just chewed all the way across there. As you can see, it looks kind of like shit, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be on the inside of the computer anyway, and we're not going to see this. And uh, it does work, and functionality is, you know, the number one thing that we go for here. Aesthetics we go for a second. Um, then uh, I simultaneously realized that uh, 
on the back of this adapter, there is absolutely no connection for CD audio. So if I uh, put in CD in the slot and it's got CD audio tracks on it, and then the game tells the drive to play those tracks, there's no analog audio outputs for those tracks. We don't hear any CD audio music. So I'm like, okay, well, um, and that combined with the fact that I couldn't get SATA CD-ROM drives working under DOS anyway, because I do not have a, uh, a PCI SATA card that presents itself as if it were an IDE uh, parallel ATA card. Uh, it presents itself as like a SCSI card. And in fact, the uh, card that I had planned on using is this one right here. And you can see right there on the BIOS chip, it says SATA RAID. And that's actually backwards for some reason. Huh, that's weird. It might not be backwards for you, though, on the recording. <laughs> and if so, that's uh, this is a very wrong kind of preview that I'm looking at here. Anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, net going to work. So, um, because this whole card presents itself as if it's a RAID card, and the DOS uh, SATA CD-ROM drive drivers, the only ones I could find, which were part of the free DOS project, uh, only check... Uh, Parallel ATA adapters, and yes, this does have a parallel ATA connection right here, but that is still not presented to the system as if it's a regular parallel ATA adapter. It's used as if this connection right here is another SATA connection right there. So, uh, yeah, didn't work. So, uh, those two factors combined, the fact that I couldn't get drivers working in DOS for a SATA CD-ROM drive, and the fact that there's no CD audio, meant that I cannot use this drive or this adapter. So, this is out. That's one of the changes I had to make. So, I'm like, okay, so I still want a slot-loading optical drive. I still want uh, CD audio. So, I'm like, okay, I'll go with a parallel ATA drive, or IDE, as it's sometimes called. And uh, looks almost exactly the same on the outside. Same form factor. Still slides right in. Yeah. Slides right in, and... See it protruding out the back like so. Line it up flush, and there we go. Now it's got its own weird connection there on the back. Turns out, fortunately, that is a standardized connection for which there are standardized adapters. And so, I got uh, this adapter right here. It indeed plugs into that funky connection right there, and on the other side, it gives us regular 40-pin IDE and... Uh, that one right there is for power, and then we have a choice for two different kinds of outputs for the CD audio, so fantastic. And because this is parallel ATA, and I will be plugging it into the motherboard's parallel ATA controller, DOS drivers will still be able to load and see this thing. So, that solves both of the problems from before, and this adapter just pushes right on the back, like so. And there we go. Make sure that's nice and snug on there. By the way, if I haven't mentioned this before, I probably should have mentioned it by now. The entire point of this video is going to be uh, mounting the drives into this and then mounting all the drives that are going to go in the front of this to the internal drive cage. So we're going to see all that. So, yeah, a little late to be doing that, about uh, nine minutes into the video, but oh well. So, um, let's start... Actually, I'm going to go through the other changes that I was making before I actually start assembling this thing. So, in the previous video, you also saw that uh, I was going to take this same card, and I was thinking about maybe uh, using a hard drive on the inside. I hadn't decided if I was going to use a hard drive on the inside, or if I was just going to run the whole thing from DVD-RAM, the optical drive which I had originally picked out for that exact reason. Uh, it turns out... There's a couple of problems in that, too. Number one, which I can't believe I didn't think of this before, but um, the DVD-RAM discs that I got are 4.7 gigabytes, and DOS 6.22 can't use a partition that size. It can only use FAT16, not FAT32. FAT32 didn't come along until Windows 95, and uh, FAT16 has a maximum partition size of 2 gigabytes. So, um, that would mean that even if I didn't encounter the other problem, which is being able to actually write to this thing in DOS, couldn't find the right drivers to actually be able to write to this because the standard uh, DOS CD-ROM drive drivers 
um, which you know is like an, uh, an IDE CD-ROM driver in combination with MSCDEX. Um, it uses the uh, DOS facility of a uh, network redirect, which um, by default means that in DOS, it thinks that uh, an optical drive is actually a network drive, and it doesn't let you format network drives. So even though the drive is right there connected to the system, the system thinks it's a network drive, and it wouldn't let you format a DVD RAM disk that was in here. So uh, even if I could somehow get DOS 6.22 to see a FAT32 drive and recognize the entire 4.7 gigabytes per disk, um, I still wouldn't be able to partition or format it because it thinks it's a network drive. So um, that uh, left me with the possibility of, well, maybe can I format the DVD RAM disk with another computer, split it into two partitions, uh, actually be three partitions, uh, for 4.7 gigs, so there'd be two 2 gig partitions and then 1.7 gig partition. So three logical drives on one disk. And then could I take that partition and formatted prepared disk and put it in here and still write to it? Um, the answer is no, because I fig couldn't figure out how to, to uh, repartition a DVD RAM disk into multiple partitions. It only wanted to do one partition, fill the entire disk, and only wanted to do FAT32 for that. So, this option's out again. <laughs> So we're not doing uh, DVD RAM exclusively for storage, and even if we could, there would still be a problem with that, which is, uh, let's take a game like Warcraft 2. Uh, it wants to install part of itself to the hard drive and then play the CD audio tracks from the optical drive. Well, in order to do that, we couldn't do that because we'd need two optical drives. If we were gonna use DVD RAM as the hard drive, then uh, that would be one drive that the game would actually be installed onto, and then there'd have to be a second optical drive with the actual Warcraft 2 CD in it that it would play the CD audio from. So, using DVD RAM as primary storage with only one optical drive in the system is totally, completely fucking out. There's just no way I can do it. So, that left me uh, back to the idea of using a combination of rewritable storage in the system, uh, being hard drive right here, uh, in combination with the optical drive here, which would say have the actual Warcraft 2 CD in it, playing the CD audio out of the back. Um, I could go with this option right here, but for some reason I just don't want to. I don't want to do a hard drive. So, what I decided to do instead, partially because I'd already ordered this before I found a different option, <laughs> was uh, this is a compact flash to SATA adapter. You take the compact flash card, which I have one right here that I've previously prepared, with uh, DOS 6.22 and the uh, sound card drivers for my Sound Blaster 16. You actually take the compact flash card and just slide it in there, provided you can line it up properly. Am I putting it in backwards? No. Okay. And you slide that in, and you can see on the inside, clicks into place, and then you got that eject button that you can use to pop it out. Holy shit! <laughs> really flung that thing. Hang on, let me get that. <laughs> Fucking flung it out of there like it was a flying UMD guillotine. Anyway, so uh, that goes in there. Still sticks out a little bit. Um, and then this entire thing right here is intended to mount into a three and a half inch drive bay. So if we pretend that it was actually like right here, uh, but down a little bit then um, you'd be able to insert and remove compact flashcards uh, on the outside of the computer. I'm not actually going to use it for that, um, because shortly after I found this, I actually found something I liked a little better for the storage in this, and that is basically a very similar adapter. The SATA one is right here. Let me put this card down so I can actually hold things properly. Um, the SATA one's right here, and this one is basically the same thing. Has a slot on the front for compact flash. It does not have an eject button uh, like this one does. That doesn't matter though, because we can just yank it out when we don't need it. Uh, but on the inside, flip them around so you can see the interfaces for both. We've got the SATA one still over here. And on the other side, it is instead parallel ATA, or IDE as it's sometimes called and has a standard Molex power connector there. The SATA one has uh, a floppy drive connector, power connector right there. And so I like this option better 
for the storage because this can plug straight into the motherboard without any additional adapters in the middle. Whereas, of course, the motherboard I'm using, which is an Asus P58-B, doesn't have SATA on it, so I'd have to use this adapter here, which, you know, has the SATA connections there, to uh, run a connection from that onto the actual thingo there. And so this option is a little cleaner. And uh, interestingly, I think what this adapter actually does is internally it converts uh, SATA to parallel ATA, which can then communicate with the compact flash card. Uh, whereas the, um, this adapter here, it has this chip in it right here, even though um, you can typically get away with using a compact flash card as parallel ATA with just a simple passive adapter. Um, but this whole assembly right here also allows for hot swapping, and I'm not actually going to use that, but I think that that's what that chip does right there. So, then, um, the plan, then, which has changed slightly, and actually, I just realized that I forgot to bring one of the things out here that I was going to bring, so I'm going to be back in a second. Ooh, jump cut. We're back again, and this time we have a new friend. Um, another one of the changes that I decided to introduce is originally using this assembly right here. I was going to have a regular 3.5 inch floppy drive put right in the top right there. And so that would complete the look, and then this entire thing would slide into one of these bays right here. Uh, the problem is, I decided to change this for this, so I could have removable storage on this thing. So now that that's in there, it's taking up the space, so what am I going to do about my floppy drive? Well, uh, one of the previous things that I was going to do is, in another one of these five and a quarter bays right here, I was going to have this five and a quarter inch floppy drive taking up the whole thing. Um, I still want to have 1.44 meg and uh, Five and uh, 1.44 meg, three and a half inch floppy, and 1.2 meg, um, five and quarter floppy. And so that means I have to get a little creative again, and that's where this comes in. This is a combination of those two drives. Come on, autofocus, there we go. This is a combination of those two drives, but still fits into a single five and a quarter inch drive bay. So the new lineup is. That's going to be in there. Obviously, I'm going to get this painted so that it matches the black of the case. And then that's going to be in there. And then the front exports are also going to be in there. See? Remember those lovely front exports? They're almost out of the shop, but they're there. So then, all three of those, we still have all the functionality that I want in one, two, three drive bays, which we have one, two, three drive bays right there. So that's how this is going to work. So, we're not doing this anymore. So that can go over there. And we're also not doing this anymore. So it can also go over there. Um, now you may be wondering one thing. Why am I planning on using both of these adapters? Why don't I just use this one for all the storage? Um, well, one thing I would like to do with this is... Uh, and part of the whole reason why I wanted to go to compact flash removable from the outside of the computer in the first place is um, I would like to make it so that I can preload a single game onto a single compact flash card and then put that in there like a cartridge, like a console. Uh -huh. Nice, huh? I can slide that in the front, turn on the computer, the game, uh, which I would configure the computer and the card to automatically boot up the game and start the game. Wouldn't have to do anything. It would all be nice and automated, thus making this a lot like a console. Because that's all you have to do with something like a Sega Genesis or a Super NES. You put in the cartridge, you turn on the system, and there you go. You're playing. So, um, one of the things I wanted to do is only have the game data on the compact flash card that I do in here. Now, the problem with that is you still have to be able to boot DOS, and you still have to load the sound card drivers, and you still have to load the optical drivers. So, that's what I'm going to use this for. I'm not actually going to mount this on the outside of the computer. I'm going to mount it on the inside as a hard drive, and then on this, 
I'm going to have uh, DOS and the sound card drivers and the optical card drivers already in there. Think of this like the firmware or like the BIOS, like extended BIOS, because I know there's like a there's a BIOS already in the computer. This is going to contain additional firmware for making this work like a console. So that's what's going to be on this. And then um, part of the startup for this is going to be to access this drive and uh, run a batch file on it that I'm going to specially name. So for example, in the auto exec bat file of this, at the end, it's going to, this being drive C, and uh, this being drive D, because that's how they're mounted. Anyway, more on that later. Um, this would have like a, a game.bat on it. And that would be the only difference from... That would be the only additional file on the card in here other than the regular game files that would install to the card. So, the auto exec bat on here at the very end after doing everything accesses drive D and calls game.bat on it. Game.bat and then is I will configure per game, per card, to run whatever executable actually represents the game. So there you go. That's how you automate the startup of this. That's also how you don't duplicate DOS and all the drivers onto every single game card. So, that's how that's going to work. Uh, let's see, I think I've uh, explained everything I need to explainify here, so I think I can actually start mounting things inside this case. So, uh, let me see if I can move this stuff around here so that I have some room to work. Tilt the case towards you so you can see it nice and pretty. Uh, also, another thing that I have in process right now is the front panel ports that used to be along the bottom right there, which I... Just, uh, let's zoom in here. <laughs> you can see the, the front panel ports that used to be in there. Uh, that front panel assembly has been removed. And uh, a friend of mine is making a spacer to go in behind that and cover those ports in so that you won't be able to see them, won't really know that, that they were ever there because I'm not going to use them anyway. And it cleans up the front of this a little bit. So with this case right here, which is a fine, solid case, it's actually not that heavy. It's uh, mostly aluminum, so uh, strong but light, which is why uh, Frank Costanza admires it. So with this, uh, you have this thumb screw on the back right there, and all you got to do, unscrew that, and then this entire thing pulls out slightly, and this has released the lock on this entire side, which means this entire cover can tilt up like this and go like that. It's always a little finicky every time I try to take it off here. Oh, look at that. It came off perfectly the first time. Holy shit. Usually the video is when stuff goes wrong. Anyway, so um, that's the case. That is the inside of the case. It has the mounting holes for a standard ATX motherboard, even though what we're going to be putting in there is an AT motherboard. That's the uh, protrusion hole for the ATX ports. Like I said in the previous video, I'm going to fill that in with the spacer thing that I got in there. It's also got a couple of cooling fans here in the back, and uh, there's one in the top panel of the case as well. So that's nice because it's going to be pulling air out. Of course, hot air rises, so the hot air inside the case is actually going to be coming up this way anyway, and this fan will just blow it right out. So otherwise, on the inside of this case, oh, there are some screws. Let's put those over there. Also on the inside of this case, uh, you can see that interestingly enough, the power supply does not go in the back of this case anywhere. Uh, you'd think it would maybe go right here, but it's not. That's actually where a three and a half inch drive goes, or a three and a half inch hard drive goes. And so instead, what they did is the power connection is still in the back, right there. But on the inside, it has this cable going all the way over here. It goes around the side of the case. Yeah. Damn cables everywhere. Yeah, there. That's the PC speaker. We don't need that. <laughs> Going to be hooking the sound card up to that. Uh, so the cable would snake around the case like this. And then the power supply actually mounts up in this upper uh, left-hand corner right here. And then this cable, which is connected to the back of the case right there, it's just a regular power cable. 
just just going to plug right into the back of the power supply. So interesting way of doing that, I thought. And then of course uh, the other facilities inside this case, there is another three and a half inch drive cage right there, and then there's the main five and a quarter inch drive cage right there. That's what we're going to be taking out and mounting all the drives in. And this is part of the reason why I'm not actually holding the camera for this video. It's because I knew I was going to need both hands to do this with any kind of uh, non-infuriating stuff. So, I'm going to take out this drive cage. And this optical drive right here actually came for free with the case. I'm not even going to use it. I'm just going to take it out. And this is where we find out that my screwdriver isn't long enough. No, there it goes. Okay. It's, it's, it's a little tight in there. As you can see, I can let completely go of the screwdriver and it stays in there. Is that even turning? Yes, it is. Okay. So there's two screws on this side. That's really kind of irritatingly tight. Yay for preparation! Should have used a longer screwdriver. This screwdriver is uh, the main one I use for just about everything that I work on. It's actually one of my dad's screwdrivers. I uh, kind of stole it from him. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> but he found out about it later, and he was actually uh, kind of proud. Because this screwdriver... It's actually one of his dad's screwdrivers. His dad gave it to him, and then I, and then I stole it from him. <laughs> but in a way, it's being passed down. Son of a bitch! What is wrong with this thing? The second screw on this side is not coming out. And the positioning of this drive cage. You know what I should do? I should take this out because that's just getting in the way. Now, how do I actually do that? Yay for more preparation. Can I take this cage out? It's looking like... I see my hair's getting in the way. Falling all over stuff. This is the only time I don't like the long hair. It's whenever I'm looking into a computer, it starts falling in. So it looks like this cage right here actually does not come out. It is... Um, soldered in there. It's not, uh, wait, yes it does. Okay. Because along the top edge of this case, all around the edge of this case, there's rivets in a few places that are holding in some of the pieces here, and in some other places there are not rivets. And so it looks like, um, this drive cage does indeed come out, because the screw right, or the thing right here is a screw and not a rivet along the side. Looks like there's one more screw to get this cage out of here. And actually, I would have needed to take at least one of these two cages out anyway to uh, mount this thing in. I might as well do that while I got the cage out. Yeah, piss. I think maybe there's some more screws on the bottom that I gotta take out. What the hell is that? Oh, it's just a piece of plastic. <laughs> But there was like a friggin' spider web inside there or something. You know, sometimes computers do literally get bugs in them. I don't know why they think they need to live in there. But it is typically a common occurrence that I find dead bugs inside really old computers. Okay, so um, to remove the bottom panel of this case is actually very similar to removing the top panel. You actually don't need to take any of these feet off of the corners. It has another thumb screw right here. Pops out just like the other one. And the bottom slides off just like that. So uh, where was that drive cage? It would have been... Where is that thing? It's up over... Yeah, it's up over here this time. So I do indeed... What the hell is that? Oh, that's from where we uh, drilled out some of the rivets. 
uh, one of the things we had to do is in order to get those front panel ports out of this case, um, there was a bracket on the back side of the case, which, you know, how about I actually show you? <laughs> it is this bracket right here. The front panel ports would have actually been uh, on the inside right there, sticking out the front. And the cables for those actually came out of the bottom right here and into the case. Get this a little closer. So uh, the uh, cables for the front panel ports came out like that, and uh, they mounted on the front side right there. On the inside, though, that whole assembly was too wide to fit out of this hole right here. And um, it was also too, too fat to try and slide out the sides. Couldn't slide it up because the switches are in the way. Couldn't slide it out of the bottom because the case is in the way. And this entire bracket right here was, um, is actually riveted to the top of the case right here and was riveted to the bottom of the case right there. And so what we had to do to get those ports out is we had to drill the two rivets out of the bottom right there and then just bend this whole bracket just like that, just forward enough that we could pull those ports out and then uh, we replaced them with screws right there. So in case we need to do that again, we can just unscrew the screws and, you know, lift it again. Anyway, severely sidetracked. <laughs> Let's uh, get the rest of that drive cage out of there. It's probably going to be a... This might just decide to break loose and, you know, clang down in there. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. Oh yeah, it's getting very mobile now. Are we free? No, fuck. Well, the screw went somewhere. <laughs> Knew that was bound to happen at some point during this project. Now we're going to have to play find the screw at some point. It's in there. You hear it clattering around. Oh. Come on. Fucker. Of course, it wedged itself somewhere where I can't see it. Because that's the only way that these screws operate. We've all been there, haven't we? Lost a screw inside a case? Fortunately, there's no motherboard in there for it to stick itself into. Okay, so now, this cage right here comes out. Interestingly, it's got these rails on the insides, um, which presumably there would have been corresponding rails that would actually fit onto a hard drive to allow that to slide in and out more easily. So now I'm actually wondering if I can even still do that without the rails to go in there. You see, that it does fit, but there's no way to screw this in. And if I take out the rails, there's no screw holes to mount, and then we've still got the thickness of the rails on the insides to clear. So uh, in order to use this, I might have to find corresponding rails to fit that, and uh, then I could use it. Oh, maybe I'm looking at this again, and oh, you know what? Oh, I think I just learned something. Maybe I don't need rails. Maybe what I need is the funny looking screws that I chucked aside. Because these screws, like I said, they're, they're kind of funny looking. They, uh, there we got a nice autofocus on it. See how the entire screw isn't actually threaded and it's like really fat towards the bottom? I bet that the fatness of that screw actually sort of acts like a rail. So if I put that in here. Oh, please don't tell me that these are, aren't threaded right. Oh, is this stupid thing threaded for small screws? It could be. I might have to get this re-threaded. In fact, let's do a test. Because there's two kinds of screws inside a computer. There's ones that are kind of uh, fat and coarse threaded, which is 
like this. And then there's uh, smaller ones that are uh, very thinly threaded, which typically go on floppy drives and CD-ROM drives. And this is going into a 3.5 inch bay, which would normally be occupied by a 3.5 inch floppy drive. So I bet these screw holes are actually the smaller fine threaded screws. Maybe there are some of those in this bag. There are some, but not the, the fat looking kind. But I can also um, see if these will actually fit. And they do slide quite nicely into the end right there. As soon as they get to the inside, then they kind of fall out because that gap is actually pretty wide. But I bet um, when screwed into the, the uh, ends of a hard drive, then those screws would actually end up in these beginning and ending portions of this rail, and it would still hold it in place. That's an interesting way of doing this. I don't think I've ever seen a case do it that way. So you would actually put four of these screws onto the hard drive first in each of the corners, and then you'd slide the entire hard drive in here like that, instead of putting the drive in here first and then screwing it in from the outside like you'd usually do. So uh, that means that I actually didn't have to remove this at all. I could have just left it in the case. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I think I am going to have to find, perhaps have someone make, a bracket that would be the same length as a three and a half inch hard drive and would still have the screw holes at uh, this corner and this corner but then would have the, uh, the mounting points for this thing. So this would go into that bracket, and then that bracket would slide into here, and then this would go back into the computer mounted properly. So uh, that's another thing I'm going to have to solve for this, is that. Of course, another option is to you know just duplicate all the drivers and DOS across every card, not use this at all, and... Uh, just run that as my primary drive. I may just do that. That's a hell of a lot simpler. And it doesn't mess with the drive label, uh, the drive lettering either. Because the way that it was going to be, um, as mounted from top to bottom, the drives, which this is another thing that I really liked about that I realized at one point in the process, is if I used the, the, uh, that compact flash as the storage for everything, then the drives from top to bottom would be A, B, C, D. And how awesome is that? Top to bottom, alphabetical order, perfect. Uh, but if I used this internally as the boot drive, then this would become C, and the drive mapping would actually be A, B, D, E. And I'm not, I don't know if I like that. So yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it that way yet or not. Um, but it certainly is looking simpler to not use this. So uh, let's put uh, this funny looking screw back in with the other funny looking screws before I lose it. Because I don't have any other screws that look like that. Um, okay, so we cannot mount this into this, so I'm just going to put this back in and uh, not do anything with this right now. So that goes over there. Also put the hard drive back over there. The only thing I don't like about using the one compact flash card uh, for all storage is that, of course, like I said, that means that uh, DOS and the drivers are going to get duplicated onto every game cartridge. But that's not that big of a deal. I mean, it, it's like a waste of space, but it's like a 4 megabyte waste of space. And the cards that I'm looking at getting are like 64 megabytes and up. So, you know. I'm actually um, looking at a lot. Not, not like like literally a large quantity of cards 
Like, you know, that's a lot of cards. But um, the, uh, the listing for it itself is listed as a lot, which is, you know, a bunch of stuff for one price. And uh, it is, believe it or not, 122 compact flashcards. And of those, most of them are 64 megabytes, which for the vast majority of games I want to run on this thing, 64 megabytes is going to be plenty. Uh, and there's also a few 128 megabyte cards, and there's a couple of 256 cards. And so far, the only game that I could think of off the top of my head that would even need more than 64 megabytes is Quake. Quake needs 80. Quake would still fit onto a 128 card with no problems, along with DOS and the drivers. So, uh, there's one of those screws. Ah, there's the other one. Good. <laughs> when reassembling things in a computer, it often becomes a, a game of... Where did I put the damn screws when I took them out? It also means if you were actually good about keeping track of your screws as you took them out, then if after you put everything back together, you have any that are left over, that means you forgot to screw something in. So you should start looking around and, you know, do that before you power anything back on. Which apparently that missing screw just fell out on top of the table here at some point, so... Because I found it no problems. Okay, so now to continue <laughs> from what I did way back there. Continue taking out this damn drive cage. like it's... Did I just do something dumb in putting that hard drive cage back in because now it's obstructing the screw, screwdriver again? So I can't get this out. Because that clicking noise that you're hearing is actually me trying to unscrew the screw. There we go me trying to unscrew the screw from the case, but the screwdriver is wedged in there, so the screw can't push itself up anymore. So I continue to turn, and that just keeps snapping the screw back into place. Anyway, I just got it out of there. Uh, glad I brought these pliers out here. Now I can reach up in there and grab that screw. There we go. There's the little bastard. So, uh... Wait a minute. <laughs> the screw that I thought that I found so easily was actually one of the drive cage screws. Which means uh, that other screw... Oh, there it is. It fell off on the floor. And thankfully, they are indeed the same kind of screws. So let's uh, put those over there. Now the other drive cage screws are much less obstructed. They got this big ass place where the power supply would be. Of course, I took the power supply out before the video. The case did come with uh, what would look to be a rather nice power supply for free, and I might use that one. Um, it depends on how loud it is when I actually plug it in, because I would like this thing to be as quiet as possible, thus making it even more like a console. And I do have a number of power supplies in my spares. So I may just go through them and see which one's the quietest and use that one. Okay. We still have a couple more screws to take out. Son of a fucking dick. I don't know if you can see what's going on here. But to get this other screw out, it's like it's partially behind this bracket. And so. I'm going to need, like, a smaller screwdriver to get that out of there. This goddamn bracket, it causes nothing but problems for this whole project so far. Anyway, let's see if I can at least get this other screw out of this side. 
before I do another jump cut and go get another screwdriver. The screws in this case actually um, are both Phillips head and flat blade. So I could get the other one out with this, maybe. It doesn't want to come out. It's tedious as hell. <laughs> Is coming though. It's like I, I can do one turn of the screwdriver and then it bumps into the bracket and I have to reset the screwdriver. There we go. Put that one over there. And then uh, apparently two more screws up here along the top edge of the case here. And there's the drive cage moving around. One of my hairs got in there. I swear there's probably like 50 pounds of hair laying around this apartment. Because you know, I... I do have quite a bit of it to go around here. <laughs> okay, so that's what the uh, drive cage looks like removed from the computer. Ooh, the bezel's fallen off the front. As you can see, it's just a regular um, optical drive on the inside there. They just put this nice, fancy-looking bezel on the front. And whenever you push the button on the bezel, it actually pushes the button on the drive on the inside. And then the tray... Uh, just pushes through this flip down part of the bezel right there. So uh, we're not going to need this anymore. So that can go over there. And looks like the rest of these, these other two bezels right here, I'm actually holding it upside down now. Looks like those just snap into place. So that's off. This one off there too. So that's that. Now we just gotta take off the screws to remove the optical drive. And this could be, you know, a totally functional optical drive. I will probably uh, test it at some point, maybe not in a video because I'm not gonna use it in this project. But uh, I do have a stack of spare optical drives. And this will go on the stack. And so these uh, fine threaded screws right here, they uh, are indeed very fine threaded. Um, like I said, that's one of the two kinds of screws typically in a computer. Here's another one that's typical. One of those uh, fatter coarse threaded screws. See if autofocus can get that. So the one on the left is typically used for floppy drives and optical drives. The one uh, on the right, actually this may be reversed for you, but um, that's uh, typically used for everything else. And what I'm actually reaching off to the side down here for is something I got as a gift at one point. It's actually quite useful. This is a big ass bowl, magnetic bowl. This thing on the bottom is a magnet. And this is a shit ton of screws that I've gotten out of computers over the years. And um, it's got tons of those. Tons, tons, tons of those extra screws in it. So uh, anytime I get some extra screws, I put them in here. Anytime I need some screws, I go to here. But since uh, the two screws that were already in the optical drive are already out, we know that they fit and they're good, I'm just going to leave these out. Because I will be using them to mount the additional drives back in here. And I have no fucking clue why. Do you see what they did here? They used four screws on this side. And I've already taken off these two screws, but they used four screws on the other side, too. They used eight screws to hold this damn thing in. Why? It only needs four. It only needs, like, one there, one there, and then one there, and one there. 
you're overdoing your job, guys. <laughs> and creating work for me. I feel like they screwed these in with like a freaking pneumatic screwdriver or something because they're pretty tight. not sure how much longer I have on the memory card here. We may have a forced jump cut coming on. Because the camera doesn't tell me how much time I have left to record, it tells me how long I've been recording. <laughs> okay, so optical drive coming right on out of there. Set that off to the side. Don't need it. So that's the cage completely empty. Now to start filling it up. So I've decided that the Frenex ports I'm going to put on the bottom of the cage. Because once this is open and I have things plugged in here, these cables are going to be hanging off. And I don't want it, if I were to mount uh, this entire thing, like say at the top of the cage, then I'd have the cables hanging off the front here and blocking off the drives at the bottom. So, whereas if I put this at the bottom, then the cables are hanging off the bottom. They're not blocking anything. So, um, to keep this a little simpler, let's go top to bottom. So that means taking our lovely dual floppy drive, um, I haven't decided if I'm actually going to use this drive or not, because I've got another one just like this, but the drives are centered horizontally. So, that goes in like that. And, keeping that in mind, I'm not actually going to screw this in, especially since I plan on, you know, taking this out and having it painted. Or, you know, maybe I should screw it in, because it's not like it's that hard to just take it back out. Alright, so um, one of the things I have to consider is the fact that we know that when the optical drive was in there, it still had that bezel in front of it. So the optical drive was like that, and it was positioned upside down. Huh. How about we put it in right side up? optical drive was positioned right about like that, and it still had the bezel in front of it, and the front of the bezel was actually flush with the front of the case. So when I mount these drives to keep them flush with the front of the case, I may push them forward just a little bit, so that their fronts still stay flush. So, put that back over there, and slide that in like so. So, and let's see, now here's an interesting quandary, what kind of screws does this take? <laughs> I've got a bunch of those optical drive screws still sitting out there, so let's try one of those first. And we'll know very shortly if this is the wrong kind of screw, because since these optical drive screws are thinner, then it'll go in without any resistance. Like without me even having to screw it in place. Son of a dick! Where the fuck? Just fire that screw off somewhere, fuck you. Find it later, I've got plenty of screws. Actually, a difference of like a millimeter here, which I will demonstrate to you. You can see the uh, screw holes are actually a little too far down, and this is with the drive pushed all the way up against the top of the cage. So I'm going to have to like kind of finagle this to get it in there. 
finagle, of course, being a technical term. See, it's tight, but it is going in. Ugh, too tight. Actually, we need it at an angle. Oh well, I'm just going to be taking this back out anyway. Doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to work temporarily. And for that reason, I'm only going to use two screws to mount this in there. You use the one here at the corner there, and then put the other one at this corner over here to kind of counterbalance it. Consult with the same friend that helped drill the rivets to remove this front panel bracket to drill these a little bit wider so that I can actually get those screws in there nicely instead of having to kind of force them. Okay, so uh, that's that in there. I didn't screw it in completely tightly because, like I said, this is going to need to slide forward a little bit and uh, I don't know how far forward it's going to need to go until I actually put this whole thing in the case. So I've left the screws a little bit loose. Now, next thing to go in is going to be this. And I need to actually screw the drives that are in this to this. <laughs> so first, since the uh, compact flash drive is wanting to slide around so much, we'll tighten its ass down first. The tricky part is, it's actually centered in there. See the screw holes are actually kind of deep down in there. So, that's what we have tools for. Use this screw, or this uh, pair of pliers here. Since uh, my fingers are too fat to actually reach down into the holes, use this to get it into the hole for me. Let go of it and hope it doesn't fall out, and it didn't. And I can screw that in there just nice. Alright. Now one for the other side. The way that the uh, compact flash thing actually goes in here, it's actually sitting on a shelf inside this bracket. So I don't really need to put four screws, uh, two on the side and two on this side. Um, I can just put uh, one on each side and that'll be enough to hold it. Of course, if I was in some kind of PC building dick measuring contest, I put a screw in each one of those three holes, but I'm not in such a contest, nor do I want to participate in such a contest. First and foremost, I want to get this done and working, and secondly, I'll worry about making it look nice. So now that's held in place there. Now to do the optical drive on the bottom. Which actually, before I forget, this adapter on the back actually screws in. Ah, just dropped one of the screws. Come here. It actually screws in on uh, each of the uh, ends right there. So that if you are pulling on the parallel ATA cable, plugs in there, you don't pull the adapter off the drive instead of pulling the cable off of the adapter. OK, 
Okay, so that's that. Now to screw the optical drive into the frame. As you can see, it has its own mounting holes. Right there, and right there. And again, it's sitting on a tray, and so I'm only going to screw in the front ones. They are thankfully easy to get to. Now for these, this is actually a third type of screw. Why is this damn screwdriver suddenly magnetic? <laughs> Never been magnetic in its life, and now look at it. It's holding on to that damn screw for like dear life. Anyway, uh, that's the actual screw that I'm using there. Super friggin' tiny thing. And that's only because this drive, uh, the optical drive, is actually out of a laptop. A desktop PC typically doesn't use these kinds of screws. And I tell you, the magneticness of this damn screwdriver is really starting to chap my ass. Magneticness, that's a new word. Somebody call up Noah Webster and say, hey, somebody said a new word. That gives us reason to print a new dictionary next year. On this side, it's a little bit harder to get to. As you can see, the screw hole is still kind of deep-ish down in there. It looks like I can drop it in place without much effort. Say it without much effort. Well, not use the magnetism of this screwdriver. There, just put it on the end there. Let the screwdriver hold on to it, and then I'll poke the whole thing down into the hole. You fucking! Yeah, that's what I wanted you to do. Drop the screw, and it goes somewhere on the floor. Found it. <laughs> Surprising. Usually my experience, as soon as the screw falls to the floor, it fucking vanishes. The floor might as well be a black hole for screws. Believe it or not, I am not the most coordinated of people. You've probably realized by now. There we be. Okay. Those are nice and mounted in there, and they are pretty flush. I'm going to call that good enough. So now this entire thing can slide into this entire thing. Right like that. And then we give it two screws. Because inside this drive cage, there's actually a couple of little shelves. There's one right there, and there's another one there, and there's another pair like that on the other side. Which is why that actually slid in there so nicely without flopping around too much. Which means, once that's in there, again, all I'll have to do to keep that in place is just put a uh, screw up here in the front, and another one on the opposite side. It's looking like those screws are probably the bigger, fatter kind. Find out if I'm wrong here in a second. It's kind of going in there kind of tight, so let me try one of the optical drive screws. And hope and pray that they didn't invent a new kind of screw for this bracket. They did not. 
So that's the one on that side. Put another one on the other side. Alrighty. And then finally, the front exports. The major driving factor behind this entire project. The uh, mounting hardware for these is actually metal too, still. There's a metal bracket goes along the inside. You can see that right there. It goes from the left side right there, or the right side. It goes all the way through and to the other side, metal. So nice, 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 nice. We're not actually screwing into plastic for this. And if there's any consistency going on here, this will also be an optical drive screw. It certainly feels that way. So, uh, crap. Where did that screw There it is. I say, where did that screw go that flew off to the side earlier? I found it. Now, we've got all the drives mounted in the drive cage. Now to put the drive cage back in the computer. Fortunately, there's nothing funny about this. There's not any uh, anything we have to, like, any brackets we have to slide them un, uh, underneath or to the side or anything. Uh, the, the drive cage basically just sits in there until we screw it in. And since I'm not exactly sure how much longer I can record on this. This may be close to the end of the video. So, to show you the front there, I am indeed going to have to push these drives forward a little bit, but you can see that that's all three of them mounted right there in the case. And once I push those forward, they're going to be flush. Once I get that painted, it's going to be black to match the case. And then uh, that's going to be damn sexy, I think. See if I can... Come on. The thing doesn't want to flip down. Come on. Do it. There. So uh, it's going to look something like that. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue messing with this. I'm going to try and push these... Uh, drives forward and of course screw this drive cage into the case and um, that's going to be the end of this video I'll do that stuff outside of the video and in the next video I'm going to be mounting the motherboard inside of the case oh, left the screwdriver in there <laughs> I'm going to be mounting the motherboard inside of the case and plugging stuff into it and then mounting the power supply right here plug that in and then uh, connect all the drive cables to all the drives put the case back together, and then it's a computer. So, yeah, this is coming on quickly, and hope to see you on the next Jeremy Builds. Okay, as it turns out that uh, I actually have 56 minutes left on the card, so the battery's probably going to die before the card does. So I'm going to continue. <laughs> so, um, let's loosen the floppy drive just a little bit. Just enough to try and slide it. Because, like I said, I want to try and slide these drives forward so that they're flush with the case. There's still... it's stuck on something. I think I screwed one of these in too tight. Because I forgot that I was going to slide them forward, even as I said I was going to do it. <laughs> I'm giving each of these just a little bit of a turn. Just enough to be able to move them this way. And indeed there is enough room mounting wise to do that. Because as you can see they're mounted currently with uh, the screws all the way back this way. 
So we've got all this distance right here to slide these drives forward, and indeed, maybe sliding them all the way forward will line them properly flush with the front of the case. Since that's the easiest option, that's what I'm going to try first. These things do not want to slide, but they're going to slide. Yeah, but one of the Phrenix things is trying to come out. Okay. Because they're basically just little slotted things that just kind of fall in there. So, of course, when you turn them upside down, they're going to start moving. Now what are you stuck on? Oh, I see you're stuck on nothing. Okay. And this these floppy drives are not wanting to move. because those screws are so tight to begin with. There's just no, nothing left for them to move freely with. So I'm just going to take those screws out entirely, and there we go. So now, let's see if that is nice and flush, having those drives pushed all the way forward. Which, by the way, if the video suddenly stops, that means the battery ran out, so. So, oh, oh, maybe, maybe. Looks like we might have achieved some sexiness. can't see it. <laughs> um, let's lift this up a bit. So with the cage aligned with the case properly, which I bumped it a bit so now i got to move it. With the cage aligned with the case, push that back to its proper spot. Indeed, the compact flash drive in the middle is flush with the front. The floppy drives, once I screw them in, will be flush with the front, and, and this is something I wasn't expecting, the Frenex ports, this little uh, flippy thing, which I've never actually really liked, it actually sticks out uh, beyond flush, so taking this off entirely means that the Frenex ports will be almost flush too. So, uh, yeah, how badass is that? So, why not do that? It looks like these just held in like that. There we go. There's that. I could put that back on there and uh, cover those up, but uh, I could also not. <laughs> I kind of like it without it. I like the... I like the ease of accessibility without that door in place, where I can just plug right in. Just plug it right in there. So now I know that these drives pushed all the way forward in the cage do indeed line up perfectly flush with the case. So I'm going to screw them in that way. Make that nice and permanent.
Ultimate Steel Compact Flash on the one side. Let's see, that's interesting. Seems like maybe the front exports might have different screw threadings on the top and the bottom. Maybe it's just really tight. Oh, you fucking thing. I unscrewed it enough to slide it a little bit more, and then that turned out to uh, completely unscrew the screw. <laughs> slide up, you little cunt biscuit. There we go. just did the same thing again. I must have screwed that in really tight on the other side. Okay, so now um, I actually am going to properly screw in all four sides for the compact flash drive. Because it looks like um, since the front X ports only have the one screw right here, um, there's a little bit of play vertically right there. Whereas if I screw this in on all four sides, then we know it's perfect. And then I can just push this all the way up against it and know that it's perfect as well. So slowly but surely, <laughs> this project is becoming uh, less of a hack and more of done properly. <laughs> Need more screws for that. We need some of those little CD ROM drive screws. Come on, I've got millions of them. Where are they? I'm digging through my thing here. Uh, there's one. Could actually use a third hand for this. Unfortunately, my penis is not prehensile, so I'll have to make do with gravity. Okay, so that's the compact flash drive screwed in two screws on the left hand side. Now to do to tighten the uh, existing screw on the other side and add another one. flash drive is not going anywhere. So now I can continue to tighten the front exports on the bottom. Okay. 
Okay, that is in there pretty damn solid. <clears throat> now for Mr. Fatty, the floppy drive. Looking at the various screws I have out here. Uh, need two more Flupa drive screws. Because I think uh, when I took those out, I ended up using them for something else. <laughs> oh, wait, no. I set them aside inside the case. <clears throat> Would it have been helpful to have some music for this? I could call up the services of the Transintestinal Orchestra. In fact, I think I can get them to play the Tetris theme for you. drive cage are going to have to be drilled bigger because these screws just will not go in at the right angle. They'll go in enough to hold the drive in place, but it's friggin' ghetto. nasty. Oh, it's nasty. Yeah, see, so check that out. I can get that in there. See the hideous angle that, that screw is at? <laughs> I need to have this area right here widened a little bit right there at the bottom so that I can actually get that screw in lined up properly. I actually do have a drill so I could do that myself. Uh, won't be part of this video though because I don't have the drill out right now. But then the drive cage goes like that. So we're getting kind of excited because <laughs> we're getting close to the end here. Oh, damn. <laughs> I <clears throat> I misjudged the distance. Because starting to put the drive cage back in, the drives are actually sticking out just a little bit. See how they're not quite flush? They actually need to go back in a little bit. So I guess when I was fiddling around before and I thought I had this lined up right, right uh, with the drives pushed all the way forward, I actually didn't. I could technically just end the video and do that separately, but um, I want to show as much of the assembly of this as possible. But actually, uh, the camera is running out of battery. It's, there's no bars left on the battery anymore, so it's going to die soon anyway. So that is where I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I'm going to make these drives flush, and I'm going to put the cage back in, and that's where it would have ended anyway. So those are the only parts that you're not going to see. And I will say <laughs> once again, thanks for watching Jeremy Bills, and hopefully there'll be more videos of this soon, and uh, eventually it'll be working, and I'll use it on my channel. So, see you then.